Hello and welcome everyone to this video on creating custom SAP OData services by Zaran Tech. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our Zaran Tech YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update from us. So hello everyone. In this video, we are going to test create a custom OData service. Now what is this OData service? So OData stands for Open Data Protocol. It is nothing just a protocol which is used to fetch data or which is mainly used to perform CRUD operation in your SAP databases by using any front-end application. That is, you can use any front-end application and you can perform CRUD operations on your SAP databases by using this OData services. So it mainly acts as a backend. Now in this OData service, we have got two concepts. Let me go to OData project and show to you how this thing mainly works. Uh, yeah, see, whenever you create any OData project, you will get mainly four folders or folders around here. The first one is data model, and in this data model, what see what if we will consist of? We get entity types, association, entity sets. So here, entity types are nothing but uh, it mainly consists of fields, and it's along with your data type it's and length. That means it only consists of a structure and it is similar to a work area that is it can store a single record at a time. Then we have got entity set. So entity sets are like uh, internal tables and uh, we can store multiple records at the runtime. Then we have got the service implementation folder. So whenever you get to the service implementation, you will see the five main methods that we have got in CRUD operation. We have got create. We have got update, we have got delete, then we have got get entity and get entity set. Now what is the meaning of it here? So get entity is simply used to fetch a single record and get entity set is used to fetch multiple record at the runtime. Then we have got the runtime artifacts. And what are these runtime artifacts? So mainly these are the classes which are generated at the runtime. There are, these are the mainly custom classes. See, we are getting the name from the Z naming convention. So these are the custom classes which are mainly generated at the runtime. Then we've got the service maintenance folder and this folder is mainly used to test your OData services. All right. So now how to develop a custom OData service? I'm going to show you a step by step. But before that, we will be taking a requirement. See, what is the requirement? We've got a table layer. We've got a transparent table layer now. And we have got a few records into it. Uh, just so many, let me show it to you. I uh, see we have got five records into it. Now, suppose what my user wants. So, user wants that if he provides a value of employee ID, so he want to see the report for that employee ID. And if he do not provide any value of employee ID, so he want to see all the record of your table. So, we will be developing our OData service for this particular requirement. So how to develop it? This is your SCG, SAP Easy Access screen. So you'll simply go to SCGW transaction code. This is a transaction code where we develop our OData services. Now click on this create button. Where you will give the name of your project. So I'm giving the name of my project as uh, OData. Uh, sorry, custom OData. Creating custom O data. Now this provide the description. Creating custom O data service. O data services. Here in the package, you will assign the name of your package, whatever your package is. Click on this OK button. You will see all this folder. Now we are required to create entity and entity sets. I have already defined. A explained what is an entity and what is an entity set. So entity is nothing but a structure which mainly consists of various fields along with your data type and length. So you will right click on it. You will go to import and you will use the DDIC structure. So here this is my DDIC structure which I am going to use. I will simply paste it here. And here give the name of any entity. So suppose I am giving employee as my entity. And do not forget to check this. Don't forget to click the checkbox that is allow this checkbox on. Then you will click on the next button. Here, click on the next button. 
Now you are required to select the fields that you want. Suppose I do not have want mandate and salary here. So I'm not selecting it. I want this four fields only. I'll click on the next button. Select the primary key here and you will click on this finish. See, you will get your entity and entity sets. Go to the data model. You will get your entity types here and in the entity sets here. See, we have got my entity set as the name of entity along with set name has been added. Then we have got our entity type as employee. And in the properties, you will see all the four fields that you have selected. Now what you will do? I will click on this folder and click on the generate button to generate your runtime artifacts. Just press enter, enter. You will get a message that your runtime artifacts has been generated. Yeah, and we are getting all the green message that is there is no error. See, we have got the runtime artifact generated. We have got various classes, MPC, MPC extension. We have got a DPC and DPC extension class. So this is DPC extension class is mainly used to implement any methods, any crude methods. So we'll write double click on this method in this class and we'll, it will navigate you to SCAT that is object navigator. Now go to the attributes, sorry, go to the methods folder. You'll go to inherited methods and see, we have got those five methods in the, which are mainly present in the service implementation of your whole data services. You can see we've got create, delete, get entity and get entity set and update entity. So first I will implement this get entity set method. So I will right click on it and I will right click on the redefine. Let's see what is happening here. In this method, we've got a parameter. See, we've got a parameter here, ut entity set. And this parameter is used to send the output from this method to the front end application. I'll write the logic here. I'll write select star from. Since this is my get entity set method. So if the user is not giving any value of employee ID, I want that all the records to be displayed on the front end applications. What I'll do? Uh, I'll write this select query here, select star from this and do table and to corresponding fields of table et entity set because this is my external parameter so I'll simply paste it here and we will have to click on this activate button see we have not got any error so this is what my if user is not giving any input from the front end application we will get all the records now we are required to implement this get entity method. So right click on it and click on the redefine button. Uh, we do not require this section which has been imported from the super classes. Now see what is happening here. This is your import parameter. So if user will provide any input from you, selection, sorry, if user will give any input from the front end application, you will get uh, your input uh, in this particular field value of IT key tab. So what are we are required to do? We need to use read table. Why we are using read table here? Because this is an internal table. So I'm simply copying it, read table into, I'm defining a work area at the runtime. So data ls key index one. Because I am, user is giving me only one input of the employee ID and I have just, I'm just required to send him the details for that employee ID. So I'll use if size of RC equals to zero. Uh, what I will do, I will write my logic here. Select, uh, or select uh, single. Okay. Well, my system is a little bit slow at this moment. The sound is slower. Yeah. Now select single star from uh, my table name 
into corresponding field sub see we have got another parameter which is used to send the report to the external application so corresponding fields of er entity where the value of my employee id is equal to ls key which is my work area which i defined at the runtime and its value perfect now click on the activate button here So I've clicked activate it. Now I'll go to uh, I'll go to back button. See what is happening here. Go to the back button. Now see, you will go to the service maintenance folder and double click on this. Here you are required to register your gateway client so that we can test our Odata service. So just give a local system alias. And the package assignment, assign the package name which you want. Here we are getting the registration status at green. That means my gateway client has been registered. So double click, click on this gateway client to navigate to the SAP gateway client where we can test our data service. Now see, click on the execute button here. We'll get 200 messages which, which show that your data service is correct. Now we what we are going to see is uh, go to the contents tab and see whatever the records you have got in our table. All right. Click on this entity set and select your entity set. Now click on the execute. See what is happening. Here, my user is not giving the value of any employee ID, and but still is getting all the record 101, 102, 103, 104, and 105. For a better observation, you can select JSON format here because and it is a since it is a light format and it is very attractive. You can see we are getting all the data in proper format in green status we got 101, 102, 103, 104 and 105 of my record here. Now suppose user want to give any input of employee ID. So what we will do, we will use employee ID equals to the value of employee ID 101. Click on this execute. See, we are getting a single record. And to prove why I have implemented those two methods. Why right? these are crucial for us? Let me show to you. I will simply navigate to those methods. Get entered. See what is happening here. I am putting a debugger. Always put external debugger. Test your data services. I will given the value of employee ID here 101. Now click on the execute button. See what is happening. Here. See what is happening here. You will go to desktop 3 here. And... Uh, just go to IT key tab and we are getting a single record see in the name we have given the employee ID and the value this is the value of your employee ID now press F5 see at this moment there is no value in this ER entity but the moment you will press F5 here you will get your value in this ER entity so this is how you can test your Odata services and uh, always remove the debugger after your work is done. So this is how we can create any custom Odata service to perform here what we are performing get details and get entity. Okay. So thank you very much.